In the wake of the coronavirus, many on the left have been pushing for Green New Deal initiatives they say will help America become better equipped to deal with the crisis. Our next guest says if you want a preview of how the Green New Deal would affect the country, just watch what is happening now. That is Alex Epstein, founder of the Center for Industrial Progress and a former fellow at the Cato Institute Fellow. Uh, good to see you. What's happening now that has you particularly concerned? Well, I mean, I think everyone is concerned about the consequences of, of the lockdown. What we're seeing is that when Americans are prevented from being productive, life is really terrible. We go backward, and, and there are just millions and millions of people who are incredibly concerned about what their future is. And the way this relates to the Green New Deal is the Green New Deal is basically a proposal to make energy incredibly expensive and incredibly unreliable. And what that does is that raises the cost of producing every single good or service in our economy. So just as we're seeing ourselves be poor because of the corona lockdown, we would see ourselves become permanently poor with a Green New Deal. Alex, the, the government has been working to combat this coronavirus uh, in, in regards to people who aren't getting paid right now with unemployment reimbursement, um, as well as, as a check that should be coming to a percentage of Americans at this point. Is that enough? No. I mean, if you think about where does the government get its money, it ultimately has to get its money from us because we have to produce the products and services that are the value in an economy. So there's no getting around. If you destroy human beings' ability to create value for any significant period of time, you are going to make people poorer one way or another. Now, you could argue that these are the right measures. I don't think they're the right measures. I think we should be having voluntary, intelligent uh, virus protection measures versus these universal lockdowns, which I think are, are uh, uh, force us to do very dumb things in most cases. But certainly with the Green New Deal, it's the same thing. It's a permanent decrease in American productivity, and that means a permanent decrease in our quality of life. And again, um, this uh, stay in place is again until April 30th. And I, I just want to hone in here. We, we understand everyone wants to protect our, our health first and foremost. That is what's happening. Um, but we can't uh, negate from what else is happening, um, such as Virginia, again, telling everyone to stay in place till June 10th. Um, Alex, we would see more of the same thing if, if that stays into effect in the middle of June. Yeah, I mean, you can think of the policy as it's an indefinite universal lockdown. It's indefinite because nobody believes any of the dates because there's no clear plan uh, by anyone. And there's not even a clear understanding of how deadly uh, the virus is. I think that this it's it's incredibly destructive on people and it makes no sense for it to be universal. This is something that very disproportionately affects the elderly and the immunocompromised. The policy should focus on protecting them, but leaving everyone else to live their free to live their lives, but to do so intelligently. We have lots of intelligent and smart things we can do to go back to work and protect ourselves from the virus now. And I think it's incredibly unjust and destructive to put the company, to put the country on an indefinite uh, universal lockdown or, or life stoppage. Alex, I, I just want to get your perspective on this. Uh, at a press conference on Sunday night, the president mentioned the fact, you know, what we could see if we didn't do any of the social distancing. Essentially, he had received numbers that two million Americans could die. And that's why he's decided to put these strict social distancing requests into place, essentially, so that number could be decreased to 100,000 to 200,000. Those are, that decision is based on medical experts. So are you questioning the medical experts' advice in this situation? Well, I'm questioning two things about this, because one thing is we can implement experts' advice in a voluntary, customized way. The best policy for New York City is not the same thing as the best policy in Nebraska. So the universal character of this and the coercive character, that's not the same as following uh, medical advice. It's this very broad-based and coercive thing. The other thing is that people, there's been a lot of good studies on this now. These medical experts, they are having huge overconfidence in the death rate of this virus. You have really good articles in the Wall Street Journal in many places by conservatives, liberals, who are saying, we don't know how deadly this virus is. There's a lot of evidence that it's a lot less deadly than we think. So what we need to do is have really good systematic testing, like they've started to do in Iceland, like they've done to some extent in South Korea, so we can actually know what the death rate is. Right now, these people are making up numbers. They're erring on the side of making up catastrophe scenarios. But the problem is their policies are catastrophic catastrophic for the lives of hundreds of millions of Americans. They're destroying lives and they're not doing it on real evidence and they're doing it in a coercive universal way versus a voluntary and selective way. In so many may, uh, ways to, to, to look at this whole story here. That is Alex Epstein, founder of the Center for Industrial Progress and former fellow at the Cato Institute. Alex, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate your time.